Hi, and welcome to Accelerize Presents. I am Pete Squirello, joined by Dave Pulkarak. Hi, Dave. Hey, how are you? Today we're going to cover implementation considerations for Microsoft System Center Service Manager 2010. And I just want to remind you that you can always learn more about System Center Service Manager implementation and training at Accelerize.com. So Dave, take it away. Uh, we are running around doing all sorts of things, but we want to make sure we take the time out to cover some just basic implementation considerations for System Center Service Manager that we've learned through, um, through experience. So uh, just a couple of things. We're going to cover some, you know, what are the key risks and possible obstacles, and then some considerations. Um, uh, so let's just get right into it. But I think, you know, Pete, let me know what you think, but I, overall for risks and possible obstacles, the key thing is always the same. It's independent of um, what tool it is. You know, we do we do process work as well as tooling. Um, you know, these these processes, uh, these tools are built on processes, and they're sort of a a mental model. It's a whole structure or framework for how you go about doing IT. They, you know, so there's this this mental model for for processes in organization. The key decisions, the policies, the concepts, the techniques that all precede the tool. The tool enables them, or should, um, and it's, it's kind of important, or actually vital, that, um, that people uh, get those concepts, get that model for incident, problem, change, and configuration and asset management in advance of, or, as, or, or with the tool. Otherwise, it's sort of like, you know, I don't know, it's just, it's just going to not uh, get the value uh, that, that people are looking for. So. Um, what do you think in terms of, of the key risk with these kinds of, you know, based on what we've done? I, I agree. It's really having a picture of what success looks like and making sure that it's very outcome driven and as we've got here that it's, it's really not focused on what the product can do. I think a lot of people get caught up in that and, uh, and unfortunately use that to really shape their decisions instead of saying, what are we really trying to automate? What are the processes that we're trying to deliver here? How is this going to help us do that better, faster? Um, it, it's really being very disciplined about it, and I think that's unfortunately where a lot of organizations go wrong. They, they just lack that discipline, and they get kind of caught up in the bells and whistles. Yeah, I think that the key thing for me about an organization like this, our experience is, first of all, they consider reporting last. I mean, I think considering reporting first is very important because that's an indicator that you're looking for what the outcome is, how we're going to measure it, and starting with that and working your way backwards. So that's a key recommendation we have. Also, there's the let's just spin it up and we'll figure it out later. Um, it's good to spin the thing up. You want to get your eyes on it, but making sure that, the, the, that there's some of the requisite knowledge is there, some trainings there, both technical and uh, conceptual. Um, I like to see the training at the outset, which is more generic, you know, so people understand the concepts. And then later on, after you've tailored workflows, et cetera, at the tail end, you cover some of that um, specific role-based training. Um, you know, so let's get into some of our, our recommendations here, you know, things to consider. One is just to get idle and mock training in advance. Um, you know, we know we're, we're in trouble with a customer when uh, we sit down and we're trying to, to help them configure their incident process and they don't know the difference between an incident and a service request. I mean, it, 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 they'll sit there and wrangle on things because there's a lack of understanding. So it's important to have um, those basic concepts out of the way. Any, any thoughts there, Pete? Oh, absolutely. It's like I, I just said, you really have to understand what you're trying to do with these tools and especially with Service Manager, since there's so much of this idle and moth language uh, and so many of these concepts built in, you're really at somewhat of a disadvantage if you don't understand that going in. Yeah. So similar to that is um, there are key decisions that need to be driven. Don't just get generic idle and moth training. Understand what the key people, process, and technology decisions are that are wrapped around these pro uh, these tool implementations. So. Be, you know, this is a list of from our, our workshops that we run. You know, are we clear on the outcome we're trying to get out of incident management? The value there. Do, do we know what incidents and service requests are going to be in and out of scope? So, basic policy decisions: what's in and out of scope, 
Um, what do we include? How you know those understanding the concepts that's important, but then making those decisions is important. Some of these decisions go into the tooling, and some of them lie outside the tooling. So, for example, for change management, are you going to have a cab? Do you have a cab? Are you going to have an e-cab? Who's going to be on it? Um, those are decisions that lay outside of the tool itself, but are vital to a, a, a good functioning uh, change management system. So, uh, just that's the second uh, recommendation there. Thought, thoughts, Pete? Yeah, I just build on that. You know, uh, you've got escalation procedures here. Um, that's both inside the tool and outside the tool. Um, there's some finer points that you just have to really think ahead to. Some of it depends on the maturity of the organization. Um, we've dealt with organizations that are, in some cases, very mature and really have all of this stuff together, which makes it a lot easier to configure the tool. Conversely, when organizations don't have this stuff together, it's as you suggested. It ends up being figuring this out on the fly, which is usually not a recipe for getting good value out of the product down the road. And I think that's when organizations tend to look back and say, ah, you know, we're just not getting what we hoped for out of the tool, not really thinking that, well, it's not the tool. Yeah. And, and, and in a similar vein, um, we, we recommend considering role-based training. Um, it, it's interesting. The, the training that uh, Microsoft provides at this point is... Uh, one course, this, uh, I think it's uh, 5127, great course, but it's, it covers absolutely everything, virtualization considerations, sizing, and that leaves the help desk manager and staff figured out, well, what, what's the 2% of this that applies to me, and are we going to cover scenarios that are relevant to me, and what am I going to see when I get into the console? So it's really important that there's training on the tool that's specific to people's roles. Um, you know, I am going to be the problem manager. You know, what what do I? How do I need to engage during the preparation for this product and, and the operation of this product? What do I need to know? I, I own SCOM or or SCCM. Uh, what do I need to do to help set up the self service portal? What do I need to do with the connectors? I mean, just very specific. For my role, what do I need to do in the preparation phase, the implementation, and the ongoing operation of this product? Help me understand that. So we provide that kind of training. We have a foundational um, course, and then we have one uh, for each of these key roles that we found to be uh, vital in the in the, in the um, process. I think the other thing is being careful to set the scope. Um, Again, kind of getting back to Pete's earlier point around outcomes versus bells and whistles and getting ADD on those. Um, to understand up front what kind of things you need to consider. And this is, this is a pretty good list based on our experience um, of the things that you need to make sure are included in your project and covered off. Um, so we put them here for your, your reference. One of the key things is user roles, mapping the user roles to um, uh, uh, your actual organization, the user roles in, in uh, SC, uh, SM, and as well as figuring out groups, queues, and lists. Um, that is something the, the, the terminology used in uh, service manager is not common parlance in, in organizations when they think about it as queues. So um, uh, we can talk to that in a little bit. Uh, we've got some other content on that, but uh, that's a key thing to, to consider.